So we have three more uh, like explanations behind disparities in health that people have examined and tested. And the first one is just access to care. So this hypothesis is that people with higher incomes can afford better health insurance compared to those with lower income. And then that means that they get better access to medical treatments. Um, but the thing is that health disparities do persist in countries with universal insurance, like among Canadian youth and among British civil servants. And both of those countries have equal access to health care. So that kind of can't explain the entire story. There is also the question of productive time. So socioeconomic status uh, differences are actually caused by disparities in health. That's what this um, argument would kind of put forth. So it's just that bad health um, leads to lower productive time and therefore you have less time to produce income. So, you know, if you're sick, you just can't work as much, essentially. There have been studies about this, like looking specifically at siblings who grow up in the same household, and they find that people who have lower health, even during infancy, can in later life have higher rates of mortality, but also lower levels of educational atta attainment and uh, lower levels of earnings in adulthood. So to some degree, um, poor health can cause poverty. Finally, we have the Fox hypothesis. Um, it's not that bad health causes poverty, and it's not that poverty causes bad health, but instead there is a third factor that's causing them both. In this um, theory, in this kind of conceptual framework, both health and socioeconomic status are determined by an individual's willingness to delay gratification. So the idea is that people who are willing to delay their gratification are more willing to invest in things like education, um, which expand socioeconomic status and in their health. So for example, smoking is pleasurable, like smoking cigarettes, it's pleasurable now, but it will cost in the long run in terms of health. Um, if an individual weighs the present a lot more heavily than the future, then that kind of, that might make that trade-off look uh, more reasonable in the same way that an individual might be less likely to invest in the future through, let's say, their education or other kinds of, um, you know, workplace advancement um, endeavors like job training if you weigh today a lot more heavily than tomorrow because that's boring or something. So it's possible that this factor could cause both of those things. So those things don't cause each other health, you know, poor health and socioeconomic status in this framework don't cause each other. They're just associated with one another because they're both caused by the third factor. So in this um, kind of more formal framework that we're laying out here, people who are willing to delay gratification have a high discount factor, right? So if you have to scale you know, your utility today is H0 and Z0, uh, but you scale down the future period utility components by this factor. Um, and so if you scale it down much more heavily, then that means that you have a very high discount factor. You discount the future very heavily. Um, then you might have a like low willingness to delay gratification. The problem with under with using this to understand kind of health disparities is um, what is it that causes that discount factor, and what is it that causes us to see differential levels of um, discount rates between social populations, especially generationally. You know, so what is it that causes that discount factor, and if it is caused by your social class, then it could just be another mechanism through which socioeconomic status ultimately impacts health, right? If your socioeconomic status is the thing that determines your discount rate, then that might prevent you from being able to invest in your future. So in conclusion, each of these different theories has supporting evidence, and each can explain some portion of the socioeconomic disparities in health that we observe. Some of the key takeaways are that more highly educated individuals generally have better health, even when you control for income. Um, health events early in life have been demonstrated to impact health later in life. Um, 
And stress plays an important role in the creation of health disparities. Equalizing access to care by itself is not going to eliminate those disparities. Um, and there, there is an important two-way relate, like dimension to the relationship between socioeconomic status and health. So putting all of it into this framework, these hypotheses about having access to care, being an inefficient producer, uh, the thrifty phenotype, like at uh, you know in utero, your exposure to food, basically, direct income, ability to invest in your health, and also the allostatic load that you build up, those are different ways in which socioeconomic status determines health. The productive time hypothesis is explaining how health impacts socioeconomic status, whether you have enough um, time to work, or are you too sick for that? And then finally, the idea that there's a third factor impacting both is the Fux hypothesis, um, and it's about whether an individual's willingness to delay gratification is what causes both health and socioeconomic status disparities. Uh, that's it for this week, except that you have two articles to read, and I'm really looking forward to the discussion board for this week.